It's Ford SUV season in California. See why more people return to Ford than any other brand. Here's a reason. We've got room. And here's another. Waze says it's faster to take the side streets. Perfect. Plus, Ford has won more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than any other brand. That's California smart. Get possible total savings over $7,600 with 0% APR on Explorer when financed through Ford Credit. Only at your Southern California Ford dealers. Hurry in today. Horn Frog fans enjoying a warm day here out at Garvey Rosenthal Stadium. TC with a 1-0 lead over the 23rd-ranked Butler Bulldogs. Now it's time for you to enjoy our Whataburger All Access. Well, last season was a success. Um, very pleased with how we played for the most part and uh, had a lot of uh, exciting games and having the ability, the fortitude, uh, the mental toughness to fight through some fitness uh, fatigue and coming away with a, a victory in a lot of those games was awesome. And then having an opportunity to, to compete again in, in the Big 12 tournament and, and finish well in that and give ourselves a chance to compete for a championship and advancing to the NCAA tournament is always good. And, and so I, as we spoke to the group throughout the course of the season, it was more of, all right, we don't want to be a one-hit wonder. It's my hope now that uh, this is no longer a goal, but it's an expectation to uh, to be playing in November and playing into deep November. We love playing at home, and obviously with the new surface and the new lighting makes it even a, a better place to play. But our fans are awesome, and this year we had the, the Rangers were really involved in, in, in setting the tone, and we also had the Fort Worth Hellfire setting the tone for cheers and chants and whatnot and making it more of a, a soccer environment. It is becoming a place to where it's very hard for other teams to come and compete and do well, and we look forward to making it more and more as the years go on, more of a, a, a tough place to play and more of a home field advantage for us to, to competing. The culture that we have is quite good. It's just a matter of uh, honing in on it and, and developing it and making sure that everyone understands what it is to be a TCU soccer player and uh, what the responsibilities are that go along with that and the expectations that go along with that. And I think that uh, we're, all, we're, we're, we're very close to getting it to where I ultimately want it to be. Indeed, a bright future for Eric Bell's soccer program. This team off to a strong start today. A 1-0 lead at the half over number 23, Butler. We bring you the numbers from that first stanza after this timeout right here on Fox. Check engine light just came on. Why? What's wrong? I don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> if it doesn't say, how are we supposed to know what's wrong with the car? I have no idea. I'm going to pull over and take a look. a way to instantly know what's wrong with your car when the check engine light goes on. Introducing Micromechanic. Micromechanic plugs into the special data port below your steering wheel. When your engine light goes on, Micromechanic sends a Bluetooth message to your phone telling you exactly what's wrong with your car. And if you're tired of getting taken advantage of by shady mechanic shops, the Micro Mechanic will not only tell you what's wrong with your car, but it will also tell you about how much the repair should cost. The Micro Mechanic could save you hundreds, or in some cases, thousands of dollars. And what if you're planning a trip and your engine light is on? Is it safe to travel? The Micro Mechanic can tell you that too. Check engine light just came on. Oh, let me check it. Just a faulty sensor. We're good. Every car should have a micro mechanic. And here's the best part. You can get a micro mechanic for just $19.95. But order now and you'll get two micro mechanics. Just pay a separate fee. It's perfect for a second car. And to make this offer even better, we'll also throw in free shipping. That's an incredible deal. Don't miss out. This is an amazing offer and is not available in any store. It also comes with a full ironclad money-back guarantee. To order, call now or go to the website, micromechanic.com. That's micromechanic.com. That's micromechanic.com. Back after the break. 
Sell your home with Purple Bricks. <laughs> Already sold my home. Purple Bricks has experienced local real estate agents that save you thousands. I could have saved thousands. Ah, commissary. The misery you feel when you pay too much in commission and get nothing more for your money. Whether you're buying or selling your home, save yourself from commissary at purplebricks.com. Back live in Fort Worth, 1-0. TC with a lead over number 23, Butler. Time to take a look at our highlights from that first half. And Ashley, TCU offensively got it going and a couple of players that have been doing it all year. This was such a good play. I mean, Warren really got in there and stuck with that ball. And then Kayla Hill just took the shot when she saw that when she saw that the goal, the, the goal was pretty much wide open for her. Um, so a really good job of TCU to really just keep pushing and making things happen. And then I love this play. Hubbard just kind of shaking bakes on the girl you know you see that you've got somebody open on the inside take the shot recover that second shot's there the second shot's one of the most important shots in soccer because it's the one that you're most likely going to score off of come take a look at our numbers from that first half how we got to that one nothing score tcu did a good job controlling possession in the first half outshot butler 10 to 3 3 to 2 and shots on goal katie love lund made both the saves she needed hannah lucky with a pair of saves of her own four corners to one in favor of the frogs and each team with four fouls apiece in that first half you add it all up it is a one nothing tcu lead at the break when when we come back, we bring you the second 45 of this one. TCU and Butler fighting for a non-conference win. We bring you second half action after this timeout on Fox. TCU with a lead over 23rd ranked Butler. Before we get to second half action, time to take a look at our Big 12 standings. And Ashley, we take a look, a couple of surprises inside the Big 12 standings early on in the year. And the big one is at the bottom of the league. Look at West Virginia, 3-2 and 3. That's a perennial top 10 program right there. I mean, they play really good teams um, in in the preseason. So, I mean, you can expect that from a, from a good team. Um, you know, half of what is going on in the standings right now doesn't mean anything when Commerce Play starts next week. So, I mean, yeah, you, you might be surprised. I mean, I like that Kansas is such a good team. Um, I know that's not somebody that we really hear about, but Kansas literally started their program like four years ago. So it's really cool to me to see that Kansas is doing so well, and they're not only that, but they're ranked on top of that, and TCU's in the mix up there with some really esteemed esteemed Big 12 programs. You look at the other one that stands out in the middle, Baylor as well, Paul Jobson's group being challenged in non-conference, as well as TCU warming up here to begin second half play. As, take a look, right there, the Frogs, as the Biggie standings now, as the Butler Bulldogs, we take a look, it's going to be a competitive league once again this year, Ashley, Georgetown atop the league at the moment. So, Georgetown is one of the best soccer programs in America. I uh, was looking to go to Georgetown for a while, too. They're such a good program, it's such a good school, um, you know, and all of these, all of these Big East teams, like, they all have really hard not all, they all, it's like TCU. They have a really hard academic program as well as a really good, um, a really good athletic program as well. I mean, the Big East is one that always has good soccer. And Kyle, it's raining. There's a little bit of rain right now coming in to the Metroplex. One thing in common with Georgetown Butler and TCU. Tuition ain't cheap, Ashley. Any of those three schools is TCU getting ready to take the field here in the second half. one nothing lead here as the Frogs coming off the tough loss last Thursday. 
to Santa Clara. Really good Santa Clara club, a good test for TCU. They have come out and responded nicely in the first half. The Butler Bulldogs, they're trying to avoid moving 0-3 on the year against the Big 12 as they already have losses against the Kansas Jayhawks on the road and the Baylor Bears on the road. Ashley, while I think Terry St. John and Rob Allman, their group's been getting challenged in these matches. They may think twice before scheduling these Big 12 teams next year. It's been kind of a rough go on the road. I mean, but if you schedule a Big 12 teams and you might win a game or two, that RPI. goes to your RPI. There you go. So, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword, my friends. As we get ready for the second half, that gives us time to let you know about our crew out here doing a terrific job at Garvey today. Michaela Lewis is our producer back in the studio. Our director is Tyler Nelson. Michaela's double duty today, by the way. She's also our AD in this one as well. Trey Hilly is our technical director. Claire Laging, she is our graphic op. Christian Bustler is our bug op. Meryl Posey is working EVS today. A one person band in there. Then Kate, Tony Simbanovich, joined by his daughter Katie, is a second engineer today. Andy Haskett is our audio one, joined by Danny Hacken on camera today. Kobe Schaefer, Steven Neer. And Brandon Hathold and Tim Daly, four-man crew, I should say, doing all the heavy lifting out here at Garvey, our crew. Best in the Big 12, one of the best in the country for my money's worth. As this one is sit in now as TCU opens up play in the second half. And Ashley, if you're the Butler Bulldogs after struggling to get things going offensively in the first half, is that something you'd like to see if you're Terry St. John and Rob Baum, a little more transition soccer early in the half? You want to see transition soccer. You also want to see strong defense. Um, you kind of just want your team to come out of the come out of the locker room like the first half didn't happen. Um, and you go to the game plan and you see and you try to make it work this half. TCU picking up right where they left off as they control the possession right there, but Peyton Cruz loses it momentarily. By the way, a change in goal for Butler to begin the second half. It'll be Leone Daigie coming in as Daigie, the 5'6 sophomore out of Langenfeld, Germany, member of the German national team on the under 16, 17, and 19 team. I'm assuming she'll be on that under 20 team as well next year when she joins them and Ashley there it is there's a pedigree keeper right there very good player off the German national team yeah you know having these girls that come in and can play on a national stage is really beneficial for good programs um, you know their first keeper in the first half is really good so I'll be interested to see what kind of caliber this goalkeeper is can, can not compare in comparison but just how strong their their defense is with a new goalkeeper in you here's know the, me i'm not a platoon fan <laughs> here's the question i have from a recruiting standpoint you know you think of the, the germany's uh, the mexico's those are those are your perennial soccer powers typically have good programs at the top are you watching them all the way down to the under 15 and under 16 and just keeping an eye because the bloodline's good there the kids they have i mean for women um you know mexico is a good one germany's a good one the u.s always has really yep. good teams um you know brazil is another good one i mean but you want to watch the talent throughout the world like yeah. that just it, giving that stage gives you the opportunity to kind of see the talent throughout the entire like the generations and the generations to come of soccer players um but i mean soccer for women is just this one's played out front right here and nice play is i think we're gonna get a corner here for tcu good play continue that thought though ashley but soccer for women is that that's the sport for us so it works and you know you see it here like the girls are just attacking the ball girls are um, you know playing all all kinds of creative soccer you know it's something that worldwide you want to watch you want to watch all the generations of women peyton cruz will go ahead and play this one in this is kayla hill right back to peyton now peyton gonna wanted to fire it out for a nice cross over there peyton flip it out front this one knocked away though nice defensive play right there as it was stoboski right there the forward helping on the defensive end there is now Isabel Juarez has it. Izzy looking to make a move here. Nice little crossover here. Juarez got it. Trying to stop on a dime there. Bumped off it momentarily. This one's knocked away. She's got to go chase it down in the corner. She'll get there. Izzy knocks it off, and it's going to be TCU ball. Good work from Juarez. Down there, the sophomore out of San Dimas, California. And this one's going to be out of bounds off Butler. It's going to go right back. Another TCU corner. Good early work in the second half by Peyton Cruz. Ashley's created a couple of corner kicks. Yeah, you know, these girls have been really good at attacking the ball. Not only really good at attacking the ball, but they're really good at creating opportunities and making the corner kicks happen if they don't get the opportunity in the, to the net. Cruz fires this one out front. But this one's going to hit the side of the net. A rare miss hit right there. Is That's one thing about TCU's game that's really stood out to me early in the season, Ashley. They've gotten a lot of quality opportunities off their set pieces from the corner. Yeah, I mean, set pieces are, I mean, for lack of a better term, free kicks for the most part. Yeah. I mean, they're ways to create opportunities that, you know, you worked for and you created something. And 
you know, it's a it's a time for the game to kind of stop for a second. So then you can really have those have those moments to, you know, let something that you've written out on paper come to life. This one's played ahead offsides on the Bulldogs there. So back over to TCU now. As we get a look, give you one more time our officiating crew in this one. Marco Vega, the referee. Victor Perez, the assistant referee. Jack Ryan Feldman, the other assistant referee. Todd Wallace, the alternate official. TCU's own Jeff Smith is the timekeeper. And Max Potter is the scorer in this one. As you get a look at Katie Lund out here for half number two. Her and Emily Alvarado have been kind of switching off in recent weeks over the road trip. Emily got starts at Missouri and Santa Clara. As there's Kayla Hill. He'll want to get in for Smith. Tara's got to track this one down, though. And a nice defensive play there on the back end, though, is stepping in was Morgan Klusterman to knock that one out. But it was Emily who got the start and the win at Missouri. 1-0 win in overtime before Katie got the shutout win and the 2-0 win at Arkansas Little Rock before seeding the net for Emily again on Thursday, who would fall, would be the loser in the 3-0 decision against Santa Clara. And actually, that is a weapon TCS. I know you've spoken. You're not a fan of the platoon system, but the glass half full, they do have two quality keepers on campus. They feel very confident when either in net. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. You, As long as you have those two goalkeepers, platooning's fine if that's what you pr or prefer, like playing every other game. Um, but it's good to know that you have those two girls that you can really count on to be strong, strong in the defense, um, to be like the backbone of the team. A lot of people don't realize it, but the goalkeeper is really the backbone of the team. You know, you have to organize, you have to stay in your game regardless of the team's back there. You have to be a support system whenever the team needs it. Um, and you also gotta kind of take it to them if they need a, if they need a, somebody to get on them. Side Bright fires it out to Maddie Warren out front. That one is sit wider than that back over to Butler. And one thing you mentioned earlier, Asher, that I think is so key in the goaltending situation for TCU is it's a mindset. And Katie Lund, she's been in this situation before. Freshman year, it was her and Courtney Hofer that were switching off back and forth before Katie finally got the starting job later in the year. Then last year, Emily comes on the scene. Kind of the same thing. Katie once again takes the job in the middle of the year. And once again, it looks to be maybe trending towards that direction again this year. So it's got to be a positive. The TCU keeper has been in this situation before, and she really owns her six when she He's in there as the Frogs are trying to move it back offensively here. Tara Smith with give it over to Thomas Stoddard. Wanted to get in the middle of the hill, but Butler does a good job moving it back ahead. Set in the middle, the Bulldogs recollect is now back ahead. They come. He's trying to track this one down for the Bulldogs. Gutlock. Lena Gutlove's got it. She'll move it back now. Send this into the 18. This one's knocked away, deflected. A bulldog is there, but Brandy Peterson, right place, right time. She gets that one out of harm's way. They're finally getting a little bit of possession inside the offensive third here. As this one's flipped towards the net. There's a bulldog there, but Katie Lund using every inch of that six foot one frame to come out and snare that one. As the junior, you see it. I think that right there is one thing that Katie, about Katie Lund's game that just stands out, Ashley. It's not only that she's aggressive, she controls her six each and every minute she's in there. She's confident. I mean, that was outside of the six. She controls her whole 18. Um, that's what you want on a goalkeeper. You want somebody who can command all 18 yards and can, you know, somebody used to tell me it's my, it's it's your castle. So she commands and doesn't let people into her castle. That's going to be my metaphor for the day. Um, and really just takes it to him. Like, she she wants people to know that that's her box, and she's confident. I mean, I, I love the fact that every time that Katie's in and we watch Katie play, she's just very confident. She's got a, she's got a very, um, like, solid demeanor when she's out there. Uh, and on top of that, I think her defense plays better when she's out there. Safe to say she's the queen of her castle, right? Katie Lund, all Big 12 member Careful, last year. Careful, I that song. <laughs> it's, uh, and the one thing about Katie, she's really stepped her game up in Kansas City at the Big 12 tournament the last two years. Did it banged up as a freshman, and then last year was terrific as well. So 
Hopefully for Eric Bell, he gets the best out of his keeper later in the year like he has the last two seasons. As Butler right now trying to find something to answer, Katie. This one's sit in, and there's Katie Lund one more time coming out and making a nice play inside the 18, getting a little dirty right there. So he beat Paige Monahan to the spot. Approaching 36 minutes remaining in this one. Kayla Hill is our goal scorer, assistant from Matty Warren. This one's sitting in the middle. There's Kayla Hill one more time with it. Kayla, shot, deflected. She scores! One more time for Kayla Hill. And the Frogs have a 2 nothing lead. Fourth of the year for Kayla Hill, her second today. And you see it right here. Ashley give the senior a little bit of room and she'll make something happen. I mean, the beautiful first touch and a great shot. I mean, it just deflected right off the, the other player and popped up at the perfect spot to put it in the back of the net. But, I mean, that was a good TCU offensive attack anyways. I mean, the ball that was played in was pretty much perfect. It slipped right through the Butler defense to help create that opportunity for Kayla. Um, that's the kind of stuff that Eric and these guys and his team and his other coaches, they draw, they draw that kind of stuff up. They practice that day in, day out, finding those seams. Butler trying to get a counterattack going here. So 2-0 now. Both goals from Kayla Hill as the Frogs looking for more ahead. It's Maddie Warren onside. Maddie shoots. There's another one. For good measure, it's Maddie Warren. Bang, bang. It's 3-0 TCU. Right there, you see it, Ashley. Maddie Warren, she just uses her speed, lets the footwork do the rest, and it's 3-0 TCU. I mean, another great slip through the seam on there, and she just takes it and sees that backside and puts it on the backside just right out of the goalkeeper's, goalkeeper's um, just the way their goalkeepers reach. Uh, you know, really good play from TCU. This is one of those things Eric and his coaches are on the sideline saying, this is how we draw things up. This is how we play. And, you know, to be able to do it against a really good Butler squad is the way that you, this is the way you want it. That is a pretty goal right there from number 20 right there. Brought it inside the 18, measured Leone Day, and then just chipped it right over in that right corner. Maddie Warren, fifth goal of the season for Warren. So Kayla Hill ties her for the goals uh, lead on the team. That lasts all of about 30 seconds as Maddie Warren trots right down the field, picks up her fifth goal of the season as it's in the 55, 55th minute. And Ashley, TCU now with 35 minutes to go finds themselves in complete control of this one. You know, like I say, don't ever take a foot off the pedal. So, I mean, TCU's just got to keep playing their game. If they can score six, seven goals, they need to do that today. They need to they need to come off the Santa Clara win, or so that, Santa Clara, um, that Santa Clara loss and just really take it to this team. Um, you know, I'm not one for brutal, brutal wins by any means, but if you can keep scoring, keep scoring. This just seemed like a contest for TCU. They just want to take some frustrations out. You know, the first three weeks of the year, other than that 20 minutes against SMU, everything had gone the way the Frogs had planned. And all of a sudden, you have 90 tough minutes on Thursday. You really hadn't handled that yet. They have handled it well this afternoon as they have bounced back nicely this afternoon. A pair of goals from Kayla Hill and one from Matty Warren. TCU up 3-0 here. And this one's moved ahead now. Maddie Warren as this one's really stopped as I think we're going to get a foul call here. I think they're going to get it on Soderstrom. DC goals number 20, Maddie Warren, her fifth. Assisted by number 11, Messiah Bryant, along with Peyton Cruz. Time for the goal. So Maddie Warren, she just keeps on coming, folks. Goal Butler against Missouri. Two more against Arkansas. Little Ruck picks one up today. And so you do the math. Five or four of the last six TCU goals have come off the foot of Maddie Warren. As Yasmin Ryan slams that one off of... Anika Schmidt right there as this one's played back ahead. Now here comes Shea Hubbard with some room to work. Here comes Shea, chip it out. Backside, Warren was there, but that one's headed out by the Bulldogs as they'll get that one out of harm's way. And as you just mentioned, I know you're liking this. The Frogs, they just keep on coming up 3-0. 
As Juarez has got it. Izzy now going to stop. Move it back now to Thomas. Atacari's got some room to work here. Let's see what she wants to do. Chip it in. Here comes Bright. Messiah. Header. There's another one. Messiah Bright. Off the assist from Thomas Daughter and the route is on it. This one right here, it's all Caritas Thomas' daughter. She sets Messiah Bright up great here at the 18, and the Frog freshman does the rest. Butler's kind of gassed right now. You can tell they're just not attacking the ball. They're not. They're giving those players spaces. But a beautiful, beautiful ball just put in the right place, and then Messiah gets in there. I mean, that's one of the things I love about watching Messiah Bright is the fact that she's not scared to put her body out there, and she's physical. So she's going to get up there and make those plays. If you get, if you put the ball up there for her, she's going to try to get on the back end of it but you can tell now this is one of those situations where Butler is now gassed because they've had a solid 10 almost 15 minutes of TCU just attacking them and you know TCU is really taking it to them um, and the heat's going to get to them at this point in time too one goal for TCU in the first 53 minutes they've scored three in the last two minutes and 57 seconds to turn a one nothing game into a four nothing game and here's my question for you Ashley Terry St. Job and Rod Baum and you bring up the heat Already lost 2-0 on Thursday, down 4-0 now. At what point do you put the white flag up and go ahead and get ready for Big East play here with 30 minutes to go? I mean, that would make them bad coaches if they put up the white flag. Uh, I mean, you want you want these coaches to try to find a way to at least get a couple on the board. You mean, if you have to change up your system, then you have to change up your system. If you've got to play with four in the back and five in the midfield and one up top to keep, it, to keep the damage low, then that's what you have to do. Um, you know... Let me rephrase real quick. Would you maybe start playing some younger players as, as this one goes on? The, the heat and everything playing in, you know, you start getting a TCU, already a good defensive squad. Finding a couple of goals on the Frogs is tough. Finding four of them, that's a really, really tall hill to climb. I mean, one of the good things is that, you know, a player can come off and then come back on. Yeah. So for now, why not just play a couple of players that you haven't played so far? Give them the minutes, give them the game conditioning. I mean, there's two girls already sitting on the sideline ready to come in for Butler. Um, you know, kind of switching out some of those players. You've had two, you've had two games now in the heat of Texas in uh, in September you're you're about to start Big East play it'll you'll never have a hot game again you're more likely to go cold so give them the conditioning now and give them the opportunity to get out there and play and see maybe you have somebody who gives you something that you weren't expecting or is a spark plug that you weren't expecting I'll say this maybe Terry St. John and Rob Allman, you can keep scheduling inside the Big 12. Just quit scheduling inside Texas this time of year. This is rough for the girls from Indiana. They're not used to this as we've been playing in 90-degree weather all day with humidity. As now here's Messiah Bright looking for another one. Bright sheds a defender. Looking for number five. Saved away by Daggy. Here comes Kayla Hill. Looking for the hat trick. She puts it on. There's the hat trick for Kayla Hill. Her third of the afternoon. And TCU is up 5 nothing. The floodgates are open, Ashley. It's TCU now another goal, and you're starting to see the scoring depth of this group. I mean, the one thing that I keep telling you is that second shot. You know, Messiah gets the first shot off, goalkeeper's out of position. Kayla comes in for the second shot outside the box. You see the, she sees the goalkeeper's kind of out of position. She's going backwards. You see in that in that replay that the keeper is going backwards. So you have a more likely chance to shoot and score. And Kayla gets the hat trick off of it. I mean, fantastic job of TCU's defense. Butler, you can tell, is frustrated on the backside right now. Um, you know, you see their three, their, you see their three defenders kind of just in frustration. The fact that, you know, they keep that TCU keeps finding those seams and they're breaking down. Um, it's one of those things. It's how do you, as a team, as a team in this kind of situation, in this adverse situation, you have to figure out how to really come back from it and really, in the middle of the game, change the way that you're playing. I'll tell you this, our main man, Luke Anderson, over at Hornfrock TV is going to have a long highlight to cut later. <laughs> TCU is just filling up the score sheet here in the second half. Kayla Hill, goal number five. She's got the hat trick today, folks. As she scores the first goal for the Frogs, the second goal, and now the fifth goal as TCU really putting it on the Butler Bulldogs here in this second half. And Ashley, while... 
people in attendance have no problem with seeing it. Part of you feels for Butler playing in this heat. They're just trying to keep on grinding. But as you said, they're playing on dead legs here. You can tell. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're they're having some problems right now. They're they're breaking down. They're not a, they're not communicating with one another. They're kind of. I mean, I don't want to say walking, but at the same time, like you can tell that they're tired out there because, you know, when you should be when you're wanting to sprint to that ball or when you need to make up that extra that extra two feet you know this is when your legs really have that problem it's a sunday game too they're ugly and for them this has gotten ugly by the way in case you were wondering at home butler had not allowed more than two goals in a game all year and we mentioned they have played a challenging schedule number 20 notre dame number 19 kansas coming off a matchup with baylor this one's sent across and a whistle here as get a foul call here let's see what it's gonna be I think we may get a PK here it's one of those moments yep. that I tell you about Kyle we don't make mistakes in the back in the in the defensive third especially in the box so a penalty kick here for Butler as to take it as we take a look at the penalty here, I think they're going to get Izzy Juarez. Yep, they're going to say that hey, that's tough, too, because I don't think she's getting to that ball anyways. But with a 5 nothing lead, not too much stress here as it'll be Annika Schmidt to take this one on Katie Lund. Try to get the Bulldogs on the scoreboard. Schmidt shoots. She scores. The Bulldogs are on the board. It's Annika Schmidt with a goal and that'll make it five to one. That's Schmidt's first of the year. She was 2017 all Big East first team member and Ashley comes in and cashes in. Yeah, I mean, PKs are meant for the opportunity for another team to score. Um, Katie, Katie Lund did a good job of figuring out which way she was going and trying to get there, but that was a good placement. Um, that was a good placement of where the ball was gonna go. Um, those are hard balls to save. They're not impossible, but they're hard. Um, but that's when you get onto your defense when they're in the back or you get onto your girls and then when they're in the back and you say we don't do this we do this now we're going to do it in another game that's more important and it's going to end up costing us the game so we have to we have to fix this now we don't make these kind of mistakes back here you can make them all you want in the midfield you can make them all you want in the in the offensive third but you do not make them in the defensive third so, as i said the Kind of a tough break for the Frogs. It didn't look like that pass was going to be connected anyways, but as I mentioned, a little bit too much contact from Juarez leads to the foul inside the box. And one thing to bring up, Ashley, when, when we look at TCU, we're in game number nine, and they see their first time that they surrender a foul inside the box. Obviously, that's something you never want to do, but we've got a pretty good way into the season having seen TCU play pretty disciplined inside the 18. I mean, you want you want that from your team, but one breakdown can cause more. Um, I guess I'm kind of pessimistic when I say that, but I'm also, I'm also a goalkeeper, so I look at it as we don't start creating bad habits now. Yeah. Um, so we start doing this now when we're winning 5-0. to zero, We're going to do this when we're tied 0-0, zero, zero, and we do not let that happen. Um, granted, I don't think think in a situation where it's 0-0, zero, zero, a ref's going to call that, but there's always a chance that he will. TCU trying to get that goal back here. This one's stolen away. Inside 28 to go. It's been a flurry of goals in this second half. TCU with four of them as Kayla Hill has got a couple. One from Natalie Heiser, one from Messiah Bright. As the Frogs play this one back ahead or try to, now Butler recollects. This one's sent back now as the Bulldogs play it ahead. Played back now, Peterson. Get it back to Katie Lund. We'll look to play it back at. Also misspoke, I believe our stat board has it wrong. It's actually Maddie Warren with her fifth goal of the year. Natalie Heiser not on the score sheet today, although Natalie's put in good minutes 
While she's been on the field, as is Callan Lawfrey pictured right there. Lawfrey, senior who, one of the leaders on this group, leads by example on and off the field as this one's sent in now as Danielle Eiley has to flip that one ahead. Bulldogs will now send it back. Eiley checks in for Thomas Stoddard as Tiana Juracek also when she comes in for Tara Smith is now the Bulldogs trying to move this one ahead now. Yasmin Ryan moves it ahead now as Yaz has some room to work. Thought about passing it, she's gonna take it herself. Yaz with it now, she'll pass it over now. Juracek, Tiana stops it. Trying to flip it out front. Juracek, out front, from the back end is McKenzie Oliver. Oh, I think they're gonna say she's offside. Yes, she is. Wipe that one away. And as Tiana Juracek can do nothing but smile right there. Mackie <laughs> gives her a hug. She snuck in on the back end. And she snuck past us, Ashley, because I couldn't tell at the moment. A bang, bang play, but offside by a step. And now the Frogs will collect it back. So TCU putting in the back of the net a lot today is now Ryan gets it in the middle. Now to Natalie Heiser. Heiser to Hill. Hill wanted to go to Juracek. That one's stolen away, though. Nice defensive play right there. Stepping in the middle was Klusterman. Lawfrey will deposit to the back line and Shea Hubbard. Pardon me, that was catching Lou, I should say, as they move this one over now. It's Isabel Juarez. Juarez going to chip this one in, let Mackey run for it. Here comes Oliver with Heiser breaking to the middle. Mack, send it out front. Davey with a nice diving stop right there. That gets a round of applause from Ashley Bullington next to me. That's a terrific play, full extension from the Butler keeper right there. I love plays like this. Um, you kind of have to extend your goalkeeper a little bit, but good job of TC getting in there. And, you know, after that last one, I don't think she's going to be able to let the ball go across the goal anymore. So she's coming out and starting to play that six up at the top of the six and putting her body on the line because you don't. Now it's controlling. Um, it's, you know, you've had four goals in this half and you just don't want any more, so it's a pride thing. So if you have to come out there and you've got to put your body on the line, you're going to because you don't. I mean, the, there's no one else between the, the goal and you. Looks more like something we see on a college football Saturday, but Leonie Daigie laying out, making a nice play. This is a college football Sunday. Exactly. Football. It was an exciting day of football yesterday, and we have an exciting afternoon of soccer today as TCU has been very offensive as Ryan sends it out front. Nice play there as the goal scorer for the Bulldogs, Annika Schmidt, gets it out of there. And a handball there on Danielle Eiley, and she's knocked to the ground. Butler's going to try to run with this one. I think Brandy Peterson's got other ideas. Yeah, she'll get that out of bounds. Peterson, the freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. First team all region at Chapel Hill High School. Terrific prep player, and she has carried it over here to TCU. Is now Peyton Cruz will check back into the contest, and we may have seen... The last of Kayla Hill today, 14th hat trick in TCU history. And she'll get a high five from both Eric Bell and Ryan Higginbotham and Tom Saratone right there. As the staff has got to be very happy with the performance they got out of their senior today. And Ashley, we discussed it during the SMU game. Kayla Hill is the epitome of the senior that leads by example. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of girls that you want on your team. You, you, there's different kinds of leadership. There's the girls that are very vocal. Um, there's the girls that bring a lot of energy that you go to for leadership. And then there's the girls that lead by example. And Kayla's been one of those girls for the past four years who's worked really hard and led through example because of it. That's one thing that's been a constant with TCU over these last three years in the two NCAA tournaments. This one's inside the 18. Butler with an opportunity here as they'll flip this one over towards Katie Lund. That'll go wide of the net. But you go back to that 16 team, the one that clinched the first NCAA tournament appearance. You have players like Michelle Prokov, Lauren Saywich, who's now on the staff, Megan Murphy, Courtney Forte. So many seniors that have played important soccer that led by example. Then last year, Emma Heckendorn was a great example, along with Allison Ganter. And Ryan Williams, those three, they really did the same. And now this year, Kayla Hill, Mackenzie Oliver, really just providing that leadership. Can't forget about Cash A. Lou, though, is Cash, the safety blanket on that back line. 
is Ashley. That's one thing that's got to be pointed out is we've talked about how the TCU back line has been much more offensive this year in previous years. Brandy Peterson and Izzy Juarez have led the attack of the a lot of time. If you don't have the senior and Cache Lou in the middle right there kind of shoring things up, I don't know if you quite have the same kind of offensive attitude, but you know that she's back there waiting defensively. I like the fact that she's kind of an anchor. Um, yep. When you look at the defense, she's definitely an anchor of it. She is the person that, you know, I, I had a sweeper growing up. Yep. Her name was Samantha Wolf. And I loved having her in front of me because I knew that, you know, if something was happening and something was going on, my back was covered. Not only that, but one of the top players, one of the top players in DFW is playing in front of me. I feel like that's kind of the same way with Cache Lou. It's like, okay, I'm comfortable because I know that if I come out of the box, like my back's covered. Um, not only that, but she's she's just a really smart player. I mean, you can see when she starts backing up to to start um, to defend and when she's attacking. Here comes Peyton Cruz looking for number six. Peyton sends it out front, but a nice defensive play by Butler to get that one out of harm's way is now Yasmin Ryan's going to look to tee this one up from distance. That one's blocked away. That was Yaz. I think she wanted to try to go up top with that one. And we're going to get a foul call here. I think they're going to get it on Danielle Eiley. And just extending that thought, Ashley talking about Cassie Lou, how strong she's been on the back line. Mentioned the leadership roles. TC, they have had a terrific anchor as a senior on that back line each of the last three years. First, it was Lauren Saywich on that inaugural NCAA tournament team. She kind of handed the baton over to Ryan Williams. Now she's handed it to Cassie Lou. They've all just done such a good job. Big reason TCU's been one of the best defensive teams, not only in the Big 12, the entire country the last couple of years. And they have really continued that so far this year as we're in game number nine. They have given up a total of six goals. Goal kick for the Frogs. It's been a busy weekend in TCU athletics. Jill Kramer's crew, the TCU volleyball, to stay home as they were had a tournament canceled due to Hurricane Florence. Picked up a sweep of North Dakota State on Friday. Then Gary Patterson's crew. Got to give a shout-out to them. How hard they fought last night at AT&T Stadium for four quarters. Just short in that one. It was a really fun ball game to be a part of and see. And then today, Eric Bell's crew looking to cap the TCU Athletic Weekend in style. As right now, they lead it 5-1. to one. As they'll send it back. Leonie Daigie now. Got a feel for Daigie. She has just been peppered here in the second half. You know, Kyle, back to your point about TCU Athletics this weekend. TCU Athletics as a whole, like, I don't think a lot of people really understand how good all the programs are here. I mean, our tennis team is really good. Our equestrian Final Four squad good. two years ago, mm -hmm. Dave Raditi's group. And not only that, but, like, our our um, rifle team is always really good, too. Like, the uh, just the sports that people wouldn't expect that TCU even has. Um, our swimming team is always competing. It's just, it's one of those things, like, all around the board, TCU's got solid programs. And just the, the fact now that you know our volleyball team our basketball team our women's soccer team um you know our men's basketball team are all really coming together and creating creating an atmosphere for athletics that people around the country are thinking of tcu as an athletic school not just a football school or a ba baseball school it's all started at the top as natalie heiser is going to move this one into the 18 not give it out to yasmine ryan yeah he's going to shoot it from distance he's going to go up and over the net. And you got to give credit where credit is due. The departed now, Crystal Conte down in Austin, did a phenomenal job in his decade plus here on campus in Fort Worth. And on top of that, Jeremiah Donati's done a terrific job since taking over as the athletic director. He'd be the first to tell you that Chris got it in a good place and now he's running with it. And now the key is to keep these coaches that they've, they've kind of gotten on campus. And really two years ago when TCU got that inaugural NCAA tournament bid as Frogs trying to get something going offensively, Bulldogs Thornton that away. You could tell the emotion when Chris was still on campus about how much it meant to him that Eric had finally knocked that door down, was almost in tears. And then talking to Jeremiah Donati about this soccer program, how important it's become. And the thing is, what you got to remember, like I said, Ashley, this isn't one of the money makers, but it's no less important than football, basketball, baseball. The emphasis is campus wide now at TCU. As Isabel Juarez sends this one in, couple of frogs there. Ooh, Juracek's down. Ooh, she got stepped on right there, did Tiana. And we may get a PK here on a penalty. Yeah, well, I think we're going to as Tiana's down on the play, though. And that right there is not good for TCU as Juracek got stepped on there by the player coming down. Is now Trisha Jamison's going to come out and 
check on Tiana as we take a look here. Ashley, it should be a penalty kick right there as Tiana got knocked to the ground. And oh, the player coming down right on her right there. I believe, was that Annika Schmidt? I think it was 27. An inadvertent player right there. And Ashley, that's never fun with those metal cleats. Uh, definitely not. I don't think anybody's wearing metal today. Nope, no metal cleats. Okay. Well, no, you can wear metal cleats, so you're just more likely to wear them when it rains. Okay. Um, you know, those are studs, so you're going to more likely wear your, just like your plastic ones today because it's kind of dry outside uh, and the grass isn't super wet. Still not fun. But <laughs> it's not fun regardless. Um, you know, that's just one of those plays where people get a little bit, like, topped up with each other and mixed up. And, you know, a TC player got the run, the deal of that one. Um, I don't think anything was malice or malicious by any means. But, yeah, I mean, to me... That, that stings for Juracek. That's, that's going to be a tough loss if he, she ends up being hurt. TCU already working without the services of Ariana Owens on that back line. She's out indefinitely with a lower body injury. And I would think, I don't want to speculate, Ashley. I did not go to school to get an MD. But it looked like with her being stepped on, hopefully that would be, you know, like a cut or like a... Uh, Cosmetic wouldn't be the word, but hopefully nothing inside the bone or inside the ligament you would we'll hope. Take Once again, on that one. Way out. as we're going to go ahead and take a timeout, though, as they take care of Tiana. 5 1 our score. TC with a lead over 23rd ranked Butler. We bring you the rest of the second half after this timeout. Here's how Old Dominion puts together a winning performance it takes precision, like how we're number one in claims prevention. It takes hustle, like our over 99% on time rate. And it takes consistently going the distance to earn our fans' loyalty. That's why we're number one in customer satisfaction. Old Dominion, official freight carrier of Major League Baseball. It's Ford SUV season in California. See why more people return to Ford than any other brand. Here's a reason. We've got room. And here's another. Waze says it's faster to take the side streets. Perfect. Plus, Ford has won more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than any other brand. That's California smart. Get possible total savings over $7,600 with 0% APR on Explorer when financed through Ford Credit. Only at your Southern California Ford dealers. Hurry in today. Tiana Juracek able to walk off on her own power. So some good news there for the sophomore out of Serbia. As we're going to get a penalty kick for TCU here. Cache Luke looking for the sixth goal of the day. Cash money. It's Cash J. Lou with a sixth goal of the day for TCU and possibly the exclamation mark. Let the back line player up, get a little offensive here in the 5-1 game as it's Cash A. Lou, normally the defensive player. She's offensive this time, though. That's what I was thinking exactly when she was when she was standing at the line. Um, you know, why not give the senior the opportunity to score? Um, you know, I will be honest with you guys. Defensive players and goalkeepers have great shots, and nobody realizes it. Um, so, I mean, good good, posi good placement on Lou. Um, I like to see that they let the senior get one in um, on, on her senior season. A lot of the times defensive players, especially center meds, don't get those opportunities unless it's on a free kick or a, um, a corner kick. So, First career goal of Cache Lou's career comes in her 52nd ball game as a TCU Horn Frog. And she deposits the penalty kick into the back of the net. As now Butler will get an opportunity of their own, trailing 6-1. to one. This one's fired out front. Couple of Bulldogs there. This one stopped down, no shot. Going to go wide of the net. And back over to TCU on the goal kick is... We're going to get a substitution. I think they're going to go to a third keeper of the match is Terry St. John and Rob Allman. As it'll be Stephanie Rodriguez, the 5'6 sophomore out of Batavia, Illinois. And 
Ashley, I know it's just one contest, but is the thought process here, you don't want to mentally lose Leone Daigie, give up a fourth or fifth goal in one half, or is something else maybe the thought process I here? I think you go to the, the, okay, she's just, she's getting it hammered to her. Let's put the, let's put the new girl in. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of time. So, you know, either, and kind of see what she's made of. If TCU keeps attacking them like they do, she's going to get a lot, a lot of opportunities. And yeah, if they rack up more goals, then so be it. You've already, like, this game's already out of hand as it is. So, why not give your goalkeeper the chance to really see what she can do? All right, Ashley, I got to ask you here. You give up five goals in the second half, and this is a player who plays a lot. She's their second half keeper. How does that affect your mentality moving forward? Does it at all? I mean, you, as an athlete, you can't let it happen. I mean, I know I say that, and it does. Um, but, you know, a prime example, I have a friend, professional baseball player, you know, and he got hammered the other night. And, but he couldn't let it he couldn't let it affect him. It's the same thing here. Like you just can't let it affect you because if you do, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. So then you're start second guessing yourself and you just can't let that happen. I mean, one of my biggest problems in college, which is probably why I was never a starting goalkeeper. I mean, four, four, I'm undefeated still. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I would let things get to me and I'd let them eat at me. And that mindset of, you know what, I'm the best there is. And every time I walk on the field, I'm going to prove it. Um, so it's making sure that you keep that mentality and knowing that, you know, sometimes you just have off games. TCU keeping that attacking mentality here as Izzy Juarez has got it now. Juarez will move it over now as the Frogs. They want some more, I think. This was played in. Rodriguez will come to start. Okay, we have the mindset of the keeper, Ashley, moving forward. If you're Terry St. John and Rob Allman, what's the message to your team after this? Is just wipe that 90 away and forget all about it? Yeah, I mean, it, you take it as like a learning. You take it as learning. So what happened? Where did we break down? Where was the defensive errors that we had? And how do we fix it? Um, you know, you have to take it as a learning, a learning thing. Failure is the best way to succeed sometimes, you know. If you win all the time, you don't learn what what your team needs to work on. So the fact that, you know, they're losing, but they're and they're losing the way they're losing is good for them because they can look at it and be like, okay, well, it's not perfect yet. So let's do this, this, and this and see if we can make it perfect. They got a lot of film to break down today as it has been a rough one for the girls out of the Big East. As really, it's been a road trip to forget for Butler. A 2-0 loss to Baylor on Thursday, although obviously that one a much tighter contest. And then today, they really just haven't been able to get things going and it's really started offensively Ashley you know in that first half it was only a one nothing game at the end of the half but you just felt TSU starting to wear this group down ball possession with the heat and it's really shown here in the second half. after that second goal um, so early in that second half in the second half you saw Butler kind of just deflate um, they were walking to the ball they weren't sprinting they the defense was breaking down and they weren't trying to recover as quickly um, players weren't getting covered uh, it's that kind of stuff that you know TC is really capitalized on to show you know we're not here to we're not here to just tie it we're not here to kind of win we're here to dominate the good news for Butler is they'll get a little extra time to prepare no Friday game next week they'll have a full week to get ready for their road contest at Marquette before they return home for home Big East matchups with Seton Hall and Providence. TCU, they're going to hit the ground running in conference plays. You have Iowa State to open up on Friday. And then West Virginia on Sunday. And actually, that matchup has been a fun one in recent years. The Mountaineers, they've always got a really, really good squad. But TCU, they've played up to them the last couple of years, not only in Morgantown and Fort Worth, but also at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, you want to play teams like West Virginia and do really well and have the opportunity to win. The better you can compete against a, a top program like that, the better off you are in the long run. And the fact that they're coming here and... Oliver sends it out front, and Rodriguez... As the answer, she knocks that one away, and it'll give TCU a corner as, man, the Bulldogs is trying to get to the finish line here. This one has been a tough second half. TCU has just kept on coming, and they're showing no signs of letting up anytime outside of the full 90 here. As Peyton Cruz will come out for the corner here. As TCU looking for lucky number seven here in this Sunday matinee matchup. They are... Closing out non-conference with a bang here is they've got Haley Malian set up next to Stephanie Rodriguez. There's a hand on her hip. Here comes Cruz, flips it in now. A couple of frogs coming in. Sullivan was there. Now out to Oliver. Mackey. Ooh, kicks it out. I think I'll hit her right in the face right there instead. That's gonna go 
back over. Now, they think it's a handball. I thought that hit Mackie. I guess, actually, Ashley Bullen says she got a better look than I did right there. It was off the hand of Oliver, so as this one's played back ahead by Butler. You got to be careful with how high you kick the ball. So if it goes past a certain point on a player, you're going to get called for a high kick. It'd be kind of similar to like a high stick in hockey. Can't play it above the post. So. Okay, real quick, since we're since we're kind of talking about different things, did anybody see Zoltan's? Oh, the goal last goal. night was incredible. The 500th goal. I've never number seen one, a, number I've one on Never Center. seen a shot like that in my entire life. Like that outdid bicycle kick. That outdid crazy header. Like that was ridiculous. Amazing. I looked at that Man. this morning and I was like, this is sorcery. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, go on Twitter. It's, pre it's pretty incredible. The goal last night, 500th of his career. And that's what makes it cool to me, Ashley. Not only was that an amazing goal, you do that for your 500th. Like, talk about do it in style. He is one of those players. I just, I remember somebody was telling me about it. He's just one of those players. He's always been so good. And not enough people in the U.S. know about him. Well, now everyone knows about Sultan. One thing that I've always thought is so cool about male soccer players, this was played in the middle right there. Katie Lund bats it up. And now Whitney Sullivan's going to have to get that out. These guys are so good. They don't even use their, they either use their, just their first or their last name. They use one name only. They don't even use the full name. Messi. I know, right? It's, it's, it's much more assertive than using the full name is. Pele. I know, right? As this one's going to be controlled by the Bulldogs now. Nine and a half to go in this one. TCU has completely controlled this one, although it's really been in the second half. Butler played neck and neck with the Frogs, or while the Frogs controlled the offense possession, it was only a one nothing game at the half. Man, TCU has opened the floodgates here in the second half. As our goal scores, was the first half goal was from Kayla Hill, and she has gotten back into the act in the second half as she picked up the second goal as well. The third one from Maddie Warren, the fourth from Messiah Bright on the header, and Kayla Hill with the hat trick, because this one's flipped up over the net. The lone goal for Butler to make it 5-1 to one was Annika Schmidt, and then Cache Lou answered it with a PK goal of her own in the 73rd minute first goal of her TCU career. Tatum Condry is going to come into the contest now. Good to see the freshman get some run here. She'll come in for Izzy Juarez. And Ashley, this is always the positive of a blowout win at home. You get to empty that bench, get some kids some opportunities. Yeah, you want to you want to give these girls opportunities to play. You never know when something's going to happen. You're going to need them. So give them opportunities now. So in those high-pressure situations, they aren't in shock walking out on the field or such, running out. Such a great point. The moment that happened last year happened to be in Morgantown, West Virginia, when Ryan Williams went down. Lucky Izzy Juarez was ready to step up, did a good job on the back line. So it's a great point to bring up. TCU very deep. They have multiple players at each position. And Tatum Condry, she's the one freshman that hasn't gotten a ton of playing time this year, but she's also a very, very good player. Ryan Higginbotham spoke about her, but kind of the nature of the beast for playing for TCU right now. There's only so many spots to play, and there's so many good players on this roster right now. It's a good, it's a good problem to have. I love that this class is ranked, too. I mean, TCU doesn't really ever get ranked classes. So it's cool that these girls are getting the opportunity, and they're really making an impact. An NCAA tournament that does a lot for a recruiting pitch. Just Tatum Condry can look to cross over here and make a move. Condry actually going to create a corner right there. That's a nice play by Condry. But hang on, let's see. Are they going to call a foul first? You say yeah, they're going to call a foul. You say that, but what's interesting is, is with soccer at least, we start recruiting eighth, ninth, tenth grade. So a lot of these girls were already committed here, and they believed yep. in the program before they started winning. Um, I mean, they were winning, but like before they had started going to the NCAA tournament, they they saw the way that Eric coached, and they saw the way that Ryan Higginbotham coached, and um, you know that's what sold them on the team. They saw the way the camaraderie was between the girls and the facilities, which are absolutely some of the best in the country for women's soccer. Um, the, you know, it was those factors, not the fact that they were went going to the NCAA tournament by any means. It was the fact of they believe in what we're selling here for this program. I'm going to draw another parallel here, Ashley, to the college football side of things. You look at all the head coaching jobs that are being attained over the last few years by guys that have been career coordinators, guys like Cliff Kingbear Kingsbury, Chad Morris, Art Bryles did it at Baylor. Is it kind of the same thing in soccer? Eric Bell had so much success at Florida State, a national top five program, has competed in multiple NCAA tournaments, been a 
national champion. How much does that weigh into this? He knows what success is made of, and now he's building it here. Definitely. I mean, Eric, Eric's, the team and the girls that Eric, Eric recruited won after he had left. Uh, but those were all of his players. Like, yeah. he was the one that recruited them. He knows what talent looks like. Uh, you know, when he first got here, I was just shaking my head a little question, questionable of him, but I believed in him because not the, it wasn't the pedigree, but it was how passionate he was. You listen to Eric talk, you can just tell how much it means to him. Eric Bell has done such a good job with this soccer program in his seven years, and really, I think you could argue Right there along with men's basketball over the last 10 years, the level of improvement, where it's at now as to where it was, I don't think there's been as big of a gain as there has been at Garvey over the last couple of years. And I think that comes with the fact that the coaches are invested. I mean, the basketball coach, he was a TCU alum. Yep. Eric's whole family is invested in this program. Uh, you know, I, his wife and his kids, I mean, he used to babysit his kids and, and, and friends with his wife, and they're just, in, they're every bit as invested in this program and in, in Eric's career career as Eric is. So it's having that support system around you and having those coaches who eat, breathe, live, and die by, you know, wanting to make their pro program successful, wanting to have lives here. I mean, I don't think unless Eric, unless somebody came to Eric with a Notre Dame job or a women's head coach for a, a, an Emma or NWSL team or something like that, I don't think Eric would leave TCU. And what also speaks volumes right across the way over at Lufton Stadium, Jim Schlossnagel, he was courted by Mississippi State in the offseason. Best facility in the entire country. They spent more money on it and an, and an SEC program, and he said no. He said he felt like life here in Fort Worth, what he's built, and how much equity he has here. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to leave, and there's it's like that all over campus, it so seems like. So what's funny is I got a text message from one of the House of Representatives that I met a couple years ago telling me that, that uh, Slush was gone. Not so and fast, I was friend. freaking out. I was like, you were lying to me? He goes, no, I just got, I just got a, um, a con confirmation that he accepted the job. And lo and behold, to find out, Slosh was staying at TCU it was one of the best days of my life. That would be like Gary Patterson leaving and going somewhere and going to like Ohio State. We would all be crushed. And it, and it just shows right there, that's, a, that's a, one of the top baseball programs in the country. And he says, no, I've, I've built this here. I don't want to go anywhere else. And I mean, the entire TCU community indebted to him, Eric Bell, the entire, all the coaches across campus for not only how good of a job they do, but how passionate they are in what they do. As Butler tries to move this one ahead, trying to get something to build on moving forward is this one's played over on the side here is saying right with her is Tatum Condry and drawing a corner right there is the Butler. For Butler, is that's a nice play offensively by Gabrielle Limkyle. And it'll be the third corner of the matchup for Butler. And Ashley, while it's a 6-1 game, obviously this one's gotten out of hand, gotten away from the Bulldogs. If you can net one here late, it's something to build on at least going forward, get something positive offensively. I mean, you want to try to at least chisel away at the deficit. Um, if you can score a goal, great. I mean, it's not going to do anything much to the to the final result, but it's the fact that you that you did it. Um, so uh, for Butler, you're you're trying to get in there and you're trying to create those opportunities and you want to keep you want to keep going because if you just hang your head and fall, the next game's going to be even harder. 240 to go in this one, but an impressive showing from TCU as they have been Strong offensively, best offensive output of the year as you get a look at Terry St. John and Rob Allman. It's been a long afternoon for the co-head coaches for Butler. They'll take their group back home and regroup in Indianapolis before they head to Marquette. We get a foul call there on Peyton Cruz. Give it right back over to the Bulldogs. As we mentioned, they'll go to Marquette next Sunday. TCU take on the Iowa State Cyclones right here on Fox. Another matchup on Fox on Sunday with West Virginia and Ashley that opening weekend. It's always a very, very critical one. You want to get off on the right foot in conference play. Yeah, you know, th so one of the one of the things that a lot of coaches stress is you want to win at home. No matter what it is, you want to win at home because it's really hard to win on the road. So winning that first conference game is big because you want to start, you want to create the precedence that you are going to win at home. You're not going to lose here at Robbie Go Ro 
<laughs> I can't say it right this second. Uh, you want to win right here at the stadium and take it to every single team as they walk on. They know that they're at a disadvantage because you, they're playing on your home territory and you win here. TCU so far this year, 4-0-1 here at Garvey, looking to move to 5-0-1 as Peyton Cruz fires it across now. Loffrey in the middle now. Butler's there to knock that one away. What will be interesting to see is how Eric Bell and Ryan Higginbotham, how they approach their keeper situation moving forward. Do we see Emily Alvarado next weekend, or do we see Katie Lund the rest of the way? This has typically been around the time of year that the TCU staff has started to make their choice to figure out who their girl is in net. I think this is the point where you have to go with consistency. The more consistency that you can create, the better off you are in the long run. I mean, if you get an easy game, though I hate saying easy game, but if you get a game where, you know, the pressure isn't as high, yeah, you let Emily play. But I think right now you, you stick to consistency and creating as good of a program as you can with the same players who can come out every single day. And TCU, a good opportunity to rest some bodies here at the end of this one. As it was an offensive explosion for TCU, a hat trick from Kayla Hill. Goals from Messiah Bright, Maddie Warren, and then Cache Lou as it's an explosion for TCU to end non-conference play. It's a 6-1 win over the Butler Bulldogs. That's just how they wanted to finish up non-conference. I think this is when you see TCU starting to move into that top 25. I think that they've played well enough and proven themselves against Butler, against Missouri, um, you know, even against Santa Clara, that they can hold their own and that they deserve to be up there and really getting looks. Uh, you know, they did so well today to get at the, at the defense and really create opportunities and score. I mean, six goals, that's a crazy amount of goals. Goals. And you saw it from all around, not just the deep, not just the offense. You saw it from the defense too. A marquee win for TCU, 6-1 over number 20 or number 23 Butler this afternoon. Special thanks to our producer and assistant director, Michaela Lewis. Our director was Tyler Nelson. Trey Hilly was our TD. Claire Laging, she was our graphic op. Bug off was Christian Bustler. Merrill Posey was on EBS. Katie and Tony Samanovich, terrific job on engineering. Andy Haskett, Danny Hacker, our audio men, Kobe Schaefer, Stephen Near, Brandon Hatfield, and Tim Daly were on cameras today. It was a big one for the Frogs. For Ash Bullington. This is Kyle Cruz saying so long. Our final 6-1. TCU wins it over Butler.